Hey, True Believers, England team here with another Marvel vs. DC. And yes, I know, I add independent comic books to it as well, and it works. So all the comic covers you're seeing pass by here, I have read, and now I review. And what I'm going to do is order them from worst to best. Normally, I do score them, but that's going to happen starting the next time. This time, or in next week, I should say. Anyway, uh... I do, however, rank them. One star is horrible, two star is bad, three star is average, four star is good, and five star is excellent. Now, I haven't had a five star in a while, but this time around, woohoo, we've got one. All righty. Uh, that being said, I guess we could sit back, relax, let's get this party started. The one star books are horrible, and you should avoid them at all costs. Never have I read a more useless comic book than they called him Charles. Well, I probably have, actually. Probably picked up some. Well, no, I did. Uh, the Wit and Wisdom of Lobo a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but this is second place because all it is is a series of vignettes of uh, this guy, Charles, dying. And then at the end, the murderer says, hey, they called him Charles. That's it. Trust me, the joke gets old really, really fast. The two-star books, they're merely bad. They could have been horrible, but maybe they have that just one little bitty saving grace. Patriotica number one. This is my first uh, exposure to Patriotica beyond the video I did about her on I Love Comics when the when the uh, Kickstarter first came in or Indiegogo or whatever it was. And I was like, okay, let's see, let's see if they do anything more with this uh, other than the whole, you know, she's got big boobs thing. Um, in all honesty, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I know there's fans out there, and God bless you if you're one of them, but this, uh, I thought, was all over the place, dialogue-wise, um, proportions uh, change in, in from panel to panel, uh, just even the action seemed like stilted, I don't know, just not the best of books in my opinion, I, I really wish I could have said differently though. The three-star books are average. They either didn't resonate with me too well, or I liked them, but just not enough to recommend them. Year Zero, number four. All righty, we're almost done. And we're almost done. And in all honesty, <laughs> guys, you need more story to these. This is my guilty pleasure book. I read it and I go, okay, okay, I get it. Uh, maybe next time they're going to really kick in and we're going to see some story on these characters. But it's more of just a little bit of vignettes that they're... I don't know why I like it. <laughs> I really don't. I'm not going to recommend this book. It's a guilty pleasure to say the least. Um, I just don't think they're paying enough attention. Too many characters, not enough story. And yet here I am buying it every month. There you go. You could, a comic book reader could be stupid sometimes doing that. Okay, so we got... Wonder Woman Dead Earth number four. This is the conclusion. And I, I do want to remind you that issue number three ended with her giving this big, you know, this kind of battle rally. And she ripped the spine out of Superman's dead body so she could use the spine and the skull as a mace. Went nowhere. I mean, she used it once, you know, and I'm sorry. I, I This is kind of a disappointing ending to the whole thing. It had one really, really good issue it had one all right issue, or two all right issues, and this one just a disappointing conclusion. Wonder Woman number 761. Do you see this cover being compared to the Batgirl cover with the Joker on it that got banned a couple of years ago? What's the difference? Beating up Batgirl's bad, beating up Wonder Woman's good, I don't know. But anyway, the story has her doing the same thing she did in that movie Doomed, where she saw all the cheetahs and she went crazy beating up everybody. Uh, similar thing happens here. It's not an original story, to tell you the truth, but at least it's not a bad story. It's actually pretty average. I'm waiting for Wonder Woman to get a really good writer. Can we, can we work on that, please? Catwoman number 24 is a bit of an interesting book in the way that it... I don't think they really know what kind of book they were writing or wanted to write. It is a fun heist, but they wanted to introduce this cat girl and everything as, long, as well as... Uh, put in snow flame it seemed like there was a lot of ingredients that made a messy soup but here's the thing the soup was tasty so while you could go there there is something off about it you still enjoy it you still like it but not as much as you would have for some reason that's the way i feel about this book entertaining ultimately forgettable and a bit muddled 
Mars Attacks versus Red Sonia. I I do appreciate the fact that they scaled the Martian technology down a little bit because you would think, wait a second, Mars? I mean, you know, you think about what happened in the, in like the movie and all that kind of stuff and how they walk over Earth. Wouldn't they do that back then especially? Uh, but they do scale back the technology. It works. Um, what doesn't work is them making Red Sonia Conan with boobs. I just didn't feel she was an original character here. I, like, I've read it before. I've seen it before. I've done it. You know, it's just... Uh, I think that th they take care of that. They've got something special. Here they've got something entertaining, but ultimately forgettable. Aquaman, number 62. All right, this is really focusing on Aqualad, the, as you can see right here on the cover, the Aqualad from Young Justice. And uh, we find out, of course, Black Manta is his father. So he's doing the whole, but daddy... Dad, why are you so evil kind of bit and talking about their lives and such like that? It's an interesting issue. Not a particularly thrilling one, but at least it didn't suck. And as you can tell by here, hey, the art's good. Injustice Year Zero Chapter 4. Look, I understand what Injustice Year Zero is. It's just an attempt to squeeze every last time out of any Injustice fan out there. But it's entertaining seeing the Justice Society. It's entertaining watching the Joker come to power. I'm, I'm, in, I'm digging this. But here's the problem. Every time I read one of these chapters, I enjoy it, but I completely forget about it until the next chapter comes along. So as much as I do enjoy it, I got to say, uh, I, I, maybe this is a better binge-worthy book than a chapter-by-chapter. Chapter. Okay, after months and months of, hey, we're going to go fight Ra's al Ghul being the entire purpose of the books, we're finally going to fight Ra's al Ghul. In this case, you've got Black Lightning taking on his ultimate weapon. Bum, bum, bum. In all honesty, I don't know if I dig this version of Ra's al Ghul as much as I do before. I like him as the noble statesman that's really, really dangerous. This seems like action villain Ra's al Ghul a little bit. And look, I understand Ra's al Ghul was always able to throw down, even in his first appearance. He went nuts and uh, fought Batman. It's just, that always seemed like a last resort to me. And this seems, and this character is very much, woohoo, let's go beat him up. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that, that's what I got. Still a good book, still a fun book. Just, uh, that, that was my little note on Ra's al Ghul. Batman Detective Comics number 26. I know, I know, 1026. Anyway, uh, so we have a battle between Batman and the Killer Croc in order to have Batman save people. Killer Croc's smarter than that. I, I know he is. It's, it's an interesting story, and it's a pretty cool character study, but I don't think that Killer Croc, even uh, being who he is, would have been the type to say, no, I need to keep these people here as slaves. Um, it's okay. It's okay, but I think that's a, that's a flaw that keeps it out of the good status. Suicide Squad number eight. Look, I don't think I don't know what's going on here. They're replacing the old with the new. Um, the uh, the the experienced with the inexperienced, but what they're doing is, and this one, this issue really highlights it. They're doing it wrong because they're making sure that the new people are competent and the older, like Deadshot and Harley Quinn, are kind of losing it and aren't as competent. That's not the way to do it. I've said things like this before. I'll say it again. You don't make a character look strong by making the people around them look weak, and that's that's what happened in this issue. Uh, we do get a bit of an origin story, and that part's okay, but overall I just couldn't get past that feeling, and uh, it kind of ruined the experience for me a little bit. The four-star books are good, and I am happy to recommend these books to you. Maestro, ladies and gentlemen, it's very entertaining, it's exciting, it's fun, it's just, it, it isn't any good, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but but what, that, that's all it needs, right? Is to, to be kind of a cheesy post-apocalyptic post story that you want to continue uh, to, to the end, which this is. It's just, I read it and I go, oh, oh my goodness gracious, yeah, this isn't the greatest writing in the world, but damn, it sure is fun. Ah, so the plot fix. That Texas Blood number three. We get a lot of character uh, with, you know, and I don't remember the names, but we get a lot of character story with the guy who comes into town. He meets this girl who's always had a crush, and then he's called out to the desert where we find out why and how his brother might have been killed. 
uh, you know, because it's one of those, oh, you're, you, we meet the drug dealer who the brother owed a whole bunch of money to. So, once again, like I said, the plot fix, it's getting better. I am amazed at how much I like this book. <laughs> Batgirl number 48. So, we have Batgirl been trapped by the Joker and she's contemplating, does she let her brother help her? or not can she trust them that's the conundrum of the issue it's a great character piece between between her and her brother i i think this is batgirl is some of the stronger chapters of the joker world's war so far and even though i'm not a hundred percent on board for the joker war as a big event every individual issue has been entertaining Ant-Man number five so anytime i do this kind of thing it, it makes me feel a little weird just on one hand, I cannot recommend to you issue number five of a five-minute issue, issue miniseries. That being said, on the whole, I can recommend you this this miniseries. It is, it's really good. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of funny. Yeah, they treat Scott Lang as a bit of a bumbler. I'm not a big fan of that, but that's such a small thing in this storyline. Uh, and it, otherwise, I got to tell you, it's, a, it's about this... Uh, bug that wants to take over the world for bugs and he ends up getting his hands on pim particles making himself huge and figuring out how to make pim particles or he's trying to so he can make all of the bugs huge and uh change the dynamic of earth man it's a lot of fun like i said check it out the flash number 759 holy crap is he really that far back on giving reviews of flash yes actually i am uh i realized i left like four issues in the box uh at the comic shop this one has to do with basically uh, Reverse Flash going around to all of his family, all the Flash family anyway, and uh, them recognizing that that ain't Barry as Barry's in the Flash Force meeting up with uh, Johnny Quick and uh, or Jesse Quick and Max. It's a really good story, and it shows a lot of character to the Flash family at the very least in that, you know, it takes more than just a costume, and that costume could even be a guy's body, to make that person that person it's a pretty decent story and so far so very good so daredevil annual number one is all about uh his brother mike or the brother that had been brought into reality because mike was a, a figment of matt's uh, imagination the, he, he's actually complaining well i have no history i was created out of thin air blah blah he gets his hands on some sort of reality stone thing and all of a sudden imagines this whole backstory. So there's a retcon of the uh, of Daredevil's origin through this stone that gives Matt, Mike Murdock a life. And it ended up being a pretty decent story. You know, I'm kind of eh, on a little bit iffy on the whole retconning and origin. All you know, it's like, hey, thank you very much for wanting to take these characters and. Uh, completely change them because you know you're, you're at the helm right now but at least you did it in a good way right mark wade and uh neil adams on fantastic four so we have something sky falling from the sky i wonder what it is as the thing holds the silver surfer on the on the cover um look this is the fantastic four using their brains it starts off with a bit of a with an annihilus here they boot him back to the negative zone. And then it's the Fantastic Four thinking on how they could solve a problem, and I liked that. I thought the writing was crisp. The, the art is Neil Adams. You know, as crazy as he is these days, he still can draw a pretty picture. And uh, this is definitely a book to pick up. The five-star books are excellent. They may not be Watchmen quality, but you know what? They definitely do the job they set out to do. The Three Jokers. Okay, I gotta tell you something. When I read this, it it was like uh, being a kid reading a comic book again. This very rarely happens where I'm reading. I'm like, holy crap. Oh, all right. Oh, wow. What, where are we going? Where are we going? What's going on? What's going And then the final page hits, and it's like, dude, I need that next issue. That's how I was with Three Jokers. I'm, I'm very happy to say I haven't had one in a long time, but this is a five-star book, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go, gang. That's the list. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What did I get right? What was too uh, too high on the list? What was too low on the list? I'd love to hear from you. Now, I'm thinking this is going to be the primary way I'm reviewing books on this channel, and I'm going to make the longer reviews go to the Patreon and so forth and so on. Uh, but, of course, I always reserve the right to uh, 
basically put something on here if it's a special book. Anyway, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Put it down in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, subscribe. You know the drill. Uh, hit notifications. Make sure your notifications are on because YouTube's like that. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, if you like what I do, you want to leave a little tip, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. The link's in the description below over at YouTube's uh, I Love Comics channel over at the channel there. I've got a uh, members only that, in all honesty, nobody's joined, but then again, I haven't done anything with it. So uh, I think I'm looking to change that. But anyway, to everybody who's already done that, to all the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.